Hi guys, I want to give you a super fresh updated version of what is going on in Iceland with a subglacial stratovolcano that just had a 5.4 earthquake. 5.4 in magnitude. That is quite large for a volcanic activity. We know when we saw the other eruptions that are currently going on on the Reykjanes Peninsula around Grindavik and the Blue Lagoon and have been going on since November 10th, we saw earthquakes maybe in the two range, but now 5.4 guys. So I want to tell you what is going on. I have reported about Bardabunga in the past, so check out my Iceland playlist if you want to know more about this because it has been rumbling there before but this is brand new guys and this is the biggest earthquake that they had in this area since the last eruption in this area that was called Holurauni. So the earthquake that hit Bardabunga this morning, Icelandic time, was measured 5.4 in magnitude, and that is quite substantial, and I think that tells us something. And if you have followed my channel, then you know I have made two videos that there was kind of a panic in Iceland because all over Iceland, along the North Atlantic Ridge, where two tectonic plates are separating from each other, We've seen a stream of earthquakes and we have seen streams of earthquakes in other areas, even cluster earthquakes. And plus we have an active eruption in the Sudnuka Crater series right now, an eruption that has been going on over a month since March 16th. And there could be a second eruption, guys. The scientists are saying that where we have the current eruption, we could see a second eruption in just a few days. And why is that? Because the magma chamber underneath the Blue Lagoon and the Swartzangi power plant is filling up again and has already reached the point where it usually used to trigger events, eruptions or intrusions. So it used to trigger events between 8 million cubic meters and 13 cubic mi million cubic meters. And we're at around seven right now, six to seven. So this is significant, guys. So Barda Bunga, this is something that is concerning. And that 5.4 magnitude earthquake was at a shallow depth and it has been followed by aftershocks by several smaller aftershocks and the largest of the aftershocks was 2.5 so that's also quite something for this volcanic activity um, right now there have been no reports that the earthquakes have been felt in settlements because this is quite an isolated area not with any major towns or cities um, so, of course, they're saying that it is very common for larger earthquakes to occur in Badabunga, but this one, the experts are saying, is on a way larger scale. So, there used to be 3.4, 3 point something in the last month, but a 5.4, that is out of the ordinary. So, the natural disaster experts at the Icelandic Meteorological Office are saying it's on a larger scale because the last big earthquake that has hit Barrabunga on March 18th was a 4.4 and now we're even higher. As this is so fresh, they have to review all the data and they will release more information once they have been reviewed it together with all the available experts, of course. What is significant in the last seven days, there have been eight earthquakes at Badabunga that reached a magnitude over 2.0 and nearly 30 earthquakes over the magnitude of one. And I want you to look here at the earthquake, at the live earthquake chart that the Icelandic Meteorological Office is uh, has released. And you can see the green star, that's the high earthquake, that's the 5.4. And all the red dots are the earthquake that occurred in a time frame between zero and four hours. But that was just now, guys, and you see, if you look at that scale with the colored dots, the colors is like how long ago that earthquake was. And then you see the red dots and it goes really, really up.
And guys, the Barda Bunga volcanic system is really large. It lies on the eastern volcanic belt of Iceland and it's about 190 kilometers long and about 25 kilometers wide. And the main volcano reaches 2000 meters above sea level. And it has a lot of fissure swarms that extend from that volcano. We have seen all the fissure swarms around Grindavik. So it's the same there too. So that system is the longest volcanic system in the whole country, in whole Iceland. And it takes its name from the main volcano Barrabunga. So that's why this whole system is called Barrabunga. The area of Vatna Jökull covers most of the volcano and the fissure swarms. So the main volcano there therefore has a glacier filled crater that is about 65 square kilometers large. And this volcanic system has been very active in the modern years with, with at least 26 volcanic eruptions in the last 11 centuries and it is considered the second most active volcanic system in Iceland. The last eruption that we have seen in the Badabunga volcanic system was the fissure eruption in Holuraun. That began in August 2014 and it ended in February 15, 2015, so several months. And most of these eruptions are basaltic eruptions that are occurring on the edges of Badabunga. But there are also large lava eruptions that have been known, that have been known to have happened there, such as the Great Thorza Rauna, I don't know if I can pronounce this right, Xorza Rauna, which formed during an eruption in the system about 8,000 years ago. And an eruption from the main Badabunga volcano can cause large glacier flows down rivers west and north from Vatna Yoko, and an eruption on the southern side of the system's fissure swarm can cause damage to the country's main power generation area. So it is threatening major infrastructure there as well. The volcanic system Badabunga is a caldera. So we've talked about calderas when we were talking about the Campi Flegrei caldera in Italy. That's a super volcano that is rumbling as well, guys. Check out my videos. I have an extra playlist. So it is a caldera. That's this widespread area. And... Uh, because of this eruption that has happened in 2014-2015, that caldera has formed. Because that was the largest volcanic eruption since 1784. Calderas are like large spread, like, 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 like a plate forming areas that usually spread around an area that is wider than 100 kilometers. So we have a caldera here as well, like we have in Italy. And um, I want to show you this graph that the Icelandic Metrological Office has released that shows that the land is rising at Barda Bunga. And you see that that graph is from April 21st. So this is current. And there you can see um, how many millimeters it has lifted up. So anything between 60 and 40 millimeters, that's where we are right now. And remember, in Swartzangi, we also have a land rise because magma is coming up to the surface. So land rise can be caused by volcanic gases, liquid or even magma trying to come to the surface. But 5.4, that is significant and it's very shallow. It's not super deep. So something is happening there, especially since we've seen another smaller earthquake swarm and also larger aftershocks. And just in case that you're interested, where where do these interesting names come from? Uh, Barda Bunga is actually named after an early settler in Iceland, and his name was Gnupa Badur. And that's why it's basically called Barda Bunga. That's called Badur's Bump. And so that's where the name comes from, just in case you, you're interested in that. We recently also had earthquakes at Grimsvatn, and... Um, 
So there was a fissure eruption in 1996, um, the Gyalp fissure eruption, and that eruption has revealed actually that there may be an interaction between Bada Bunga and Grimsvatten. So there was a strong earthquake in Barda Bunga at about five on the Richter scale, and it is believed to have started the eruption in Gyalp. So does that mean that this could happen again right now? Will we not even see an Barda Bunga eruption? Will it start or trigger eruptions somewhere else? Well, it has so in the past. So guys, now we know why there have been reports and reports within the last few days that scientists are concerned about the volcanic activity all over Iceland right now, not only just the Reykjanes Peninsula that's supposed to have woken up from a dormant period that lasted 800 years. So I don't think it's far from over. I think we will see a second event near the current eruption that still keeps going. And uh, in light of that, guys, I'll check out my last video about some stupid tourists that sneaked out from wherever, probably the Blue Lagoon parking lot, and then uh, we're trying to hike to the current eruption. There's the high risk of gas pollution if you get near that. Toxic volcanic gases. The Blue Lagoon had to be evacuated because of this a few times. So, of course, as always, it happens so many times in Iceland that these stupid tourists try to walk to the eruption sites and it's like a four or five hour hike sometimes. So, um, of course, already on their way to the eruption, they caught rainy weather, foggy weather, cold weather. So they were calling the rescue teams because they were exhausted and cold and wet. They were not even prepared. So three rescue teams had to get out there and had to search for them for over an hour and then had to bring them back. So check out my video about that too. But I want to tell you something else that's interesting because, you know, Grindavik was opened up again for residents, for like contractors that need to do repairs, for the press. The press has fought hard to gain access to document what's going on there. And of course, for businesses like the fish processing farms. But we haven't talked about restaurants and like tourists related businesses there and I thought well the restaurants it's hard for them because these little people that are in town on a daily base probably it doesn't even it's not even worth opening your restaurant and, and buying supplies and stuff like this so now they're they want to drive buses in there so it seems that this is allowed I'll talk about more in my next video but it's not allowed that you just want to have dine in one of these restaurants and you drive into Grindavik with your own car but it is possible with buses to help out these restaurants which I understand I mean I'm all for helping these businesses but on the other hand again the civil defense and the police chief says it's not safe because there's this high hazard level of cracks opening all of a sudden, sinkholes, fissures, etc. And only people who have business in the town should be in the town. And he recommends do not stay in the town because it's not safe. And now we're having maybe another eruption and more earthquakes or whatever. <sighs> And they're driving people in there again, like tourists or who is that, right? Um, it just gives me a sour feeling. I, I, I'm really in support of the businesses and the people of Grindavik. Don't get me wrong, but um, I, you know, if you know me, you know, I don't like what they're doing with the Blue Lagoon, that this thing is open as soon as they can, raking in the profits and using the tourists basically to do that. Now they're talking about making this eruption a tourist eruption and they have formed a committee that should discuss building a parking lot or access trails to that eruption. Well, how that is going, we've just seen it yesterday, right? And the civil defense and the police says, hey, we're out of this. We're not doing this. We can't babysit the tourists because we're busy with other stuff. So you have to find someone who does that. But we know how it ends, right? Of course, they're calling the rescue teams and they have to go out there because they're trained in that. So how is this going with Grindavik? If there's buses with tourists or, you know, if that was Icelanders that want to support the Grindavik businesses that go there in these buses they're fully aware of the risk and I think I think that's okay but you know the tourists they're stupid 
and they have to kind of be prevented from risking their lives, I, in my opinion, because of course it is interesting to see Grindavik. Yes, I admit this, it is interesting. But should they be there while these events are taking place? My opinion is a strong no. Let me know what you think, guys. Let's discuss this as always. Thank you so much for watching. There'll be more updates. I'm so sure about this. Um, and uh, yeah, thank you so much for supporting my channel. And I see you very soon. Bye-bye.